Hi guys. Today I'm going to talk to you about 20 random facts about me. I've actually written down a whole list because I don't think I would be able to come up with many facts just from my head. So let's begin. Fact number one. I have a brown mark in my left eye. So I've had it for a really long time and it's probably really hard to see far away but you might be able to see the brown dot in there. That is something that I believe I got because I used to rub my eyes a lot. So number two, I was born in Cambodia as some of you who've been following me might know. However, when I was a baby, so this was after I was adopted and I moved in with, well, the parents that I have now, they took me in. They used to do their very best to keep my culture going and play music that was Khmer. So Khmer music is basically Cambodian music, but we call it Khmer. And I hated it. I did not want to listen to Khmer music at all when I was a baby. I don't know if it had anything to do with the past, if it brought memories or um, I felt uncomfortable, but apparently I used to get really quite upset and frustrated when they would play Khmer music. So number three, I was a tomboy up to about my teens. So definitely when I was in primary school, up to about middle school, I didn't really care much about my appearance. I wouldn't really care about things like brushing my hair. I would wear really baggy shirts and trousers. And I just really didn't care what people thought. Number four, I used to hate the color pink. I don't love it, but I have been told it suits me and I don't mind it every now and again. My favorite colors, however, are green and purple. So I definitely love wearing them around. Yeah, pink just used to be something I really was against. Number five. When we were in our last unit, we only had a shower. But if I'm being perfectly honest with you, I am so much happier being in this new house and having a bath. I just feel that baths are great ways for me to relax. Number six, I have tons of makeup. Who would have thought that? Number seven, when I was younger, my mum used to tickle my back to get me to sleep. And ever since then, anybody who touches my back when I'm tired and just sort of strokes it or tickles it, it pulls me to sleep. I don't know what it is, but I do feel that tickling is really soothing for me. And maybe it's like another source of massage. It really relaxes me and helps me sleep. So when I don't get my back tickled, sometimes I find it very hard to sleep and I try and watch a lot of tutorials to help me or just find other ways to put myself to sleep, like read or play the piano or something like that. Number eight, I have anxiety and I'm not afraid to tell anybody that because I know for a fact that it acts up every now and again. It didn't really help with some of the relationships I had in the past. Being neglected at times brought up my anxiety. Not being listened to or ignored brought up my anxiety. I feel that I'm at my highest point of anxiety when something makes me feel like I just I can't do anything right. That's really when it comes up and I also feel that 
asked if there is a person I find intimidating and I can't see them because I'm going to wet my pants <laughs> because I'm so scared. No, I know it's like, um, what do you call it? Not sarcasm, it's like figure of speech. The point is my anxiety really acts up with talking to people who put me down and I try really hard not to let it show, but I guess for certain circumstances, it's not really healthy. For others, it's okay to have anxiety, getting scared and excited at the same time, like flying, uh, I feel like that sometimes. I used to love flying, now it's come to a point where it's not my favorite thing, but I still feel a little bit of anxiety when I'm in the air and thinking about what it'll be like to land. But at the same time, I know when it's happening and honestly, I'm really grateful for Greg because I talk to him when I'm feeling it. But before he came along, I would definitely call up uh, counselors. I was just that, yeah, I just, I knew I needed help with anxiety especially if I felt like I was going to lose somebody or I felt that somebody was treating me badly and I didn't know how to deal with it I mean it was just yeah I guess you guys know what that's like but I don't take any medication for it I don't feel that it's that severe and in saying that, maybe, you know, it's nothing at all, but at the same time, I feel that everybody has a bit of anxiety at some point, and the best thing is to know when to ask for help. Number nine, I struggle to finish projects. I was starting massage therapy and couldn't finish it because my heart wasn't in it. Uh, I tend to be that type of person that really struggles when I'm not feeling like it's working out for me and I feel like it's not really that important anyway. Number 10, there's a 13 year gap between my sister and I and I think that's really cool. Number 11. I taught myself how to apply makeup through watching YouTube videos. I almost forgot where I was up to. Number 12, I was an AB student in high school when it come, came to art. I was 13. My first and only week cruise was going to Norway. So I wrote that down and I'm now trying to put it into words that make human sense. When I was about 10 years old, mum and dad's anniversary. Yes, that makes more sense. It was mum and dad's anniversary. Cannot really remember the date of it, so please don't ask me. I'll have to check back with mum because she's better at dates than I am. Anyway, they were going on a cruise and they were super excited about it, which I was for them. And mum was all ready to have dad to herself. And what happened? He wanted me to come. And I <laughs> was super excited because I wanted to go and I knew that my mum wasn't keen about it, but I could keep low. I could, you know, occupy myself if need be. It was really exciting to go on the cruise and believe it or not, there were 10 other children. So I really spent a lot of time with them anyway, and believe it or not, because we were the only children, we did a couple of performances in front of everybody in the ship just for fun. I don't even know why we did it, but I just think that because the cruise, oh, hang on, the captain's son was like, similar to our age and asked the captain if that was okay and he obviously thought it was okay 
And we got a lot of laughs from it, including the audience. Hey, so I was in the middle of telling you guys about my 20 random facts and then being the battery that it is, died. So I had to go and charge it and continue again. So I will pretend that nothing happened. I'm back here. Yes, I'm wearing my jacket. I'm a bit chilly inside. I've got the heater on, but for some reason it's still really cold. So anyway, I'll get on with it. I think I was up to number Ooh, number 14 okay number 14 is a really weird one for me because I know that uh, I've experienced this in the past I didn't actually know the name until quite recently I think my husband found it on Facebook or somewhere online and he sent me a link and I'm really appreciative that he did because to be honest I used to think that um, Especially when I was alone and sleeping at home, I used to have this really big issue with sleep where I would wake up in the middle of the night and I wouldn't be able to move. Now, it's something that apparently a lot of us have and there are many reasons as to why we have it, whether it's not enough sleep, where, whether it's too much stress. I mean, there are many factors as to why we get it, but I have sleep paralysis. Okay, number 15. Whenever I'm cooking oil, uh, sorry, whenever I'm cooking bacon, I seem to have this really big issue with oil spitting at me. Number 16, in grade one, my teacher was concerned. Now, I wrote that part, but I didn't write the rest. And I'm going to explain that to you. So, when I was younger, living back with my parents back in Perth, we used to have this little game where everyone in my immediate family, sorry, is it immediate or intermediate? Hmm. Would, like my mum, my dad and my sister would act a certain way. And... When I say act a certain way, like pretend to be something they're not. So my dad was very heavily into theatre. So, you know, he used to pretend to be a different character. I can't remember what the reason was, but I do remember taking it very seriously. Like if he pretended to be a pirate, I really believed that he was. Or if he pretended to be um, a clown or something like that, it, it just... I believed, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, my diary entry one day was that my dad's a pirate, my mum's a witch, my sister's a dinosaur. And I can't remember what I was, but I'm sure if I talk to my mum about it, she'll remind me of what I wrote about myself. So my teacher read it and was really concerned, took it to my parents and was pretty much like, Oh my goodness, what is happening? Is everything okay at home? And my parents just laughed because to us, it, it was really more of a joke than anything else. And for the teacher to take it seriously, like there was really nothing for her to worry about because it was just a bit of our fun and it was just a family thing, I guess. So I'm going to call that a random fact because... I think it's funny that my family used to pretend to be things, creatures that they're not and it was seen as fun. Not something to hurt anyone really, um, it was just to, I guess, help us bond and have a bit of a laugh. 17. Clean hair is important to me. Some cartoon movies make me quite emotional. I will not deny that. A lot of movies make me emotional, but cartoon ones, certainly like Sing and Moana and Leap or Ballerina, depending on where you're from, that's what the movie is called, have really deep stories inside of them. And I just love the fact, I'm just going to move this over a bit. I love the fact that these stories are about people wanting to pursue their dreams and believing that there is always 
a silver lining because I guess so of us get caught up with our lives that we just don't think that anything better is going to come out of it. We don't think that we could enjoy life a lot better. Number 19. I hate shoe shopping. Okay, very last number for today and I will let you guys go. Number 20. I'm not keen about seafood. Seafood is something that I think I can deal with when it comes to fish. I know that fish is so common. Fish is something that is served everywhere and to be honest, being Khmer myself, I grew up on fish and rice. That is really my type of food. Hence, I'm not heavily into steaks and I'm not heavily into uh, lamb chops and like really meaty things. I'm more of a fish rice person, but I don't like crab and I've tried it and I don't like lobster. I just don't really see the point in it. It's okay to try it if need be, but honestly don't give me a whole crab to eat because I'm not interested. I don't like the whole taking it apart and eating it. It's just how do I explain it? I just don't like the feel of it. I just feel that I'd rather eat something that I didn't have to take apart. I don't know, it's just my thing. I know some people, they love things like crab and lobster because they love that whole idea of taking it apart and then eating it because that's, that's their jam. But it's not me and that's okay. But, uh, however, I just want to say that anybody who does eat seafood, anybody who's into lobster and crab and and what's the other thing? Yabbies and all that sort of stuff. Go for it. You can eat it next to me. That is fine, but don't expect me to eat some. Okay, I hope that was interesting for you and you learned a little bit more about me because how boring would it be if you've learned the same stuff about me that you know and I will see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And, you know, feel free to um, mention some new content and videos that I can come with, up with. I think it's interesting to know what else is out there to learn about and what else there is out there for me to show you guys. I know that I was doing lots of tutorials, but I can still do tutorials and I can still do other videos as well. Okay, bye.